Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in the ShredGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing, as well as analysing, tech news, which, as usual, has popped up the past 24 or so hours. Hopefully, you're having an amazing day. We have a lot of stuff to get through today for NVIDIA. Some really cool stuff, actually, with RTX 30. Some of this is insanely exciting, and some other bits as well. But I want to start things out uncharacteristically with a plug for something which is actually coming up next week. This has been something I've been trying to set up for a while now, um, and I've managed to grab NXG, who is a fellow YouTuber, um, onto a podcast, but we're going to be joined by a special guest, Matt Hargett, who is perhaps better known as Psych on Twitter. He is a former PlayStation employee. He was working uh, on the software of the PS5, and he will be on the um, podcast. He's now working at Roblox. I want to be very abundantly clear up front so that uh, you guys don't go in with unrealistic ex expectations. Matt is under NDA for Sony. So we will not be extensively discussing the PS5. The main purpose of the podcast is to really discuss gaming, a possible... Uh, new Nintendo console and what, you know, we could be seeing there. General movements in the industry and just basically having a lot of fun. It will be a pre-recorded video um, because I want to do some uh, post-editing on it and also just in case Matt does reveal something that's privileged information, obviously we don't want to get him in trouble. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so because it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. And honestly, I want to start doing a lot more of these podcasts, a lot more of these guests. Uh, I want to try and get Neil Trevor back on from NVIDIA as well. Uh, because obviously he's part and parcel of the Kronos group, and I just love having these conversations. Like, honestly, the reason I like doing this kind of work, you know, working on YouTube, is A, talking to all of you. Uh, we've got Discord now as well. It's really fun to kind of engage with people, and just talking with the industry, it gives me a lot of pleasure. And uh, yeah, so I'm really excited about it. But anyway, plug, 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 over. Let's discuss in video. Micron... And rumours have basically painted that the RTX 30 series is possibly going to be even more beastly than what we expected. These cards could potentially be actually a revolution in graphics. Allow me to explain. So first of all, Micron have actually on their website confirmed that the RTX 3090 will be getting between 19 and 21 GBPS memory. By the way, credit to videocards.com for this discovery. This would mean that this card, thanks to the memory bandwidth, uh, sorry, thanks to the number of chips that it's going to have, which apparently is going to be 12, um, which would indicate that the bus width is going to be 384, although they are stating that it's got 12 gigabytes of memory. Apparently that's old information, but we'll get into that in just a second. Either way, they are stating that it's going to be a card which has up to one terabyte, or actually breaking one terabyte per second of memory bandwidth. They've also said in a statement that it's the fastest graphics card that is uh, NVIDIA, um, and it will be delivering a legendary performance. They've also said that it will be uh, helping driving ray tracing, shadow mapping, silky smooth animations, and so on and so on. I can see that. I mean, these cards are going to be nuts. In terms of raw performance, it is nuts. And continuing this uh, theme, there is some further info, and this is where the RTX 30 series becomes crazier. This is where it becomes absolutely crazier. Um, there is a leak that has been circulating on the internet, and it is of a PCB which possibly is a custom 3080 card. It's a little unclear. The exact GPU that's residing on this isn't clear. Now, I want to be really, really abundantly upfront with you. If you look at the chip, which we can see it's blurred out, but it's actually an Intel chip. So basically the reason behind this is allegedly there is a super secret for this particular card that the leaker did not want to reveal. And the leaker in question is Yuki ANS at the website Billy Billy. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Either way, this is interesting for several reasons. The first 
is that Copa D7 Kimi is actually, I was speaking to them on Twitter, and they've confirmed that they believe that this is definitely a real uh, GPU. It is definitely the actual board itself. Um, it looks like it's a custom card. It looks like it's an AIB card that's probably from Colorful. And it, from what all the rumors have been so far, the launch of the custom AIB models, as well as, of course, the GPUs from um, NVIDIA, will launch simultaneously. Now, as I said a moment ago, the manufacturer are claiming to the source that leaked this, it's a 3080, but it could also be the 3090. You can see all of the chips on the um, GPU, and there are several elements to this which have been blurred out. And this is where things start to get a bit crazier, because allegedly on this PCB, there is a second die, just to be clear here, I don't mean the memory chips before someone <laughs> makes the joke. No, I actually mean that there is a secondary processor here. Now, there were rumours that this secondary processor would do something like um, helping with BVH calculations, right? So that would mean basically for better ray tracing, but that doesn't seem to be what this does. The rumour has it that instead... This is going to be for denoising an image or maybe doing something specifically for AI. It's very unclear at the moment because A, we're dealing with a lot of translations from people who are in China and basically don't speak native uh, English, which is fair enough. I wish I could speak uh, Chinese or Japanese, especially Japanese, but that's beside the point. And the second thing is that we are also dealing, of course, with still tons of uh, NDAs and, well, basically leakers have to be very careful with what they actually show off. But this apparently is actually underneath the second chip. There were some reports that it's behind the, the chip. In other words, on the opposite side of the PCB. But that doesn't look like it's at right. It seems like it's underneath it. Now, whether this is a stacked configuration, I don't think so. It, I, it seems to me like it's literally, like, you know, physically just below it. If that makes sense. So, not under it, but just, like, below it. And that's why it's being hidden basically by the Intel GPU. And we don't exactly know what this secondary chip does, but the rumor has it, from what I'm hearing, it's for something like denoising an image. And the reason that that's so important is because, and I stress this is, assuming this information is correct, I cannot verify this myself, but assuming this is correct, it would most likely mean that this chip is going to be really good at something like hardware-based ray tracing. There are still a ton of things that we don't know about this particular second die, so it could have other functions. For all we know, it could jump out of your GPU and make your pancakes in the morning. I'm just simply saying the rumor is that it's really good for denoising the image, which again, if you look at how, say, a game like Quake two RTX functions, and I have done a very extensive breakdown, by the way, of um, DLSS, but I'm also working on a ray tracing video, but I'm kind of thinking I might as well for, wait for AMP here. But basically, if you do something like um, path tracing, which is what um, Quake 2 does, basically you can have uh, the noisy image, right? Which is... Just to be clear, path tracing is different from ray tracing. I'm going to give the, you know, the two cents explanation here. This way more, ex way, way more complicated than what I'm about to explain. But this is the two pennies version. So obviously you have traditional, um, you know, rasterization techniques, which could be, you know, traditional shadows, like soft shadows or whatever. Um, and then you've got traditional, and that's right, then you've got hardware based ray tracing, which is considerably more uh, computationally expensive. Basically, rays are sent out into the scene, essentially figuring out where light will intersect with geometry. And obviously, if a surface is able to bounce that ray, reflect that ray, that ray will then be calculated for a second bounce and for a third bounce and so on. There are limitations in place, but this is basically working 
as a complement to traditional um, hardware, sorry, traditional rasterization graphics. So basically, this could be for shadows, this could be for lighting. Uh, and once again, I'm very much simplifying this. But if you go full path tracing, it's not like that. The entire scene is basically done with, well, ray tracing, essentially. It's way more computationally expensive, but it makes games like Quake 2 look gorgeous. I mean, sure, Quake 2 still does not look like a completely modern game, but it looks amazing. And Quake 2 RTX is... You know what? As someone who played Quake 2 back in the day when I was pretty damn young on a 3DFX Voodoo card, I can honestly say that it was essentially bringing a tear to my eye to play it with this particular thing. But anyway, getting back to this, denoising, essentially what it does is when rays are being uh, thrown into the scene, there are finite numbers of rays that can be created because hardware, as you probably guess, is not infinite in its power. There's only a certain number of rays which can be generated per second. So basically, denoising, uh, well, removes the noise in the image. Uh, so yeah, long story short, this should be better at that, and this should be better at hardware-based ray tracing, which is one of the rumours that I said for a long time, Ampere is way better at hardware-based ray tracing. We also have some updated information concerning the clock frequency. Obviously the number of CUDA cores is important, but frequency also matters too. And this information comes courtesy of Rogame on Twitter. I'll again link his uh, Twitter handle in the description. Anyway, the board is using GA102. This is unsurprising. We've been hearing this for a long time now. And apparently is equipped with 24 gigabytes of memory. Once again, all of this seems to indicate that the higher-end NVIDIA boards do have a ridiculous amount of memory. We have leaked PCBs at this point, Micron, all of these other rumours, all seeming to indicate that NVIDIA are outfitting these GPUs with a ludicrous amount of RAM. But he also states, that is Rogaine, that we're looking at 1410 and 1740. This is for both the base and boost speeds, respectively. These clock frequencies he first released back in July, of course, of this year. And this is about 200, slightly under that megahertz faster, than the 2080 Ti. Given it's, of course, a vastly improved process versus what we have with Turing, I think about 200 megahertz makes sense, because it's not like they haven't added other stuff. There is, of course, a vastly more complicated die that we're looking at, with more CUDA cores and so on and so on. Yeah, space gets eaten up, but also power limitations, heat, all of these things do play a part. And uh, yesterday, I think it was, I covered the fact that uh, we're looking at over 20 chokes, and a ridiculously beefy power uh, distribution circuitry for NVIDIA's Ampere cards, especially the higher-end ones. So, long story short, I don't think these GPUs are going to be hitting, let's say, 22, 2300 megahertz out of the box. I think it's possible, especially if you were to do, like, water cooling or something like that, you may be able to get a little bit more out of them. I think that if you overclock them, you could probably get like 21, 2200 megahertz. That's just a guess. Um, I would be interested to see what NVIDIA allows you to do with the BIOS power limits and stuff like that. Because obviously, um, we haven't really exactly had uh, voltage controls and that type of thing for some time. So it's always been power limits. I would also be really curious to see what happens in terms of memory bandwidth. Like... Are they even slightly memory bandwidth starved, given, once again, one terabyte per second, allegedly, of memory bandwidth from these higher-end cards? I suspect that uh, these GPUs will probably hit about 2 gigahertz for the core, on average, uh, with gaming. But, once again, if you overclock them, there's probably 5-10%-ish uh, ish headroom. I am going to be in very, very interested to see how AMD compared to NVIDIA's hardware-based ray tracing. Um, but yeah, I suspect, and this is a guess, NVIDIA will crank out DLSS games. 
they will do everything they can to put DLSS on the map. And I think that you're going to get cards like the 3060 and 3070 in particular, which will be of critical importance with DLSS. And yeah, I mentioned also in a Nintendo um, exclusive when I was detailing a new Nintendo Switch, which is part of the reason, by the way, that Matt and I are going to be uh, discussing the Switch, because I think it's kind of cool. Um, this is probably going to impact the future of graphics. It's like, from what we understand, that Switch is also going to have a form of DLSS, which means that a game could, for example, be rendered natively at 540p, and it looks better in many cases than 1080p. Screw native resolution. I want as many visual effects as I can get at a higher frame rate. I don't care about the native resolution as a PC gamer. I'm happy to play my game at, like, 720p, for example, and then upsample that sucker to 1440p, get way more frames a second, way more animation, way better graphics, way better ray tracing, and then let, you know, AI take care of it. And it looks better. That's the thing. As this thing gets better, as we start to improve, or NVIDIA, shall I say, not us personally, but as it continues to improve, it's just, it's cool stuff, is what I'm essentially saying. I'm incredibly excited to see what NVIDIA and AMD are working on for the next generation. Um, yeah. So, while I've got you here, I also want to discuss some comments from Phil Spencer, and these are particularly interesting. He appeared recently on Gary Witter's Animal Crossing talk show, and he mentioned several things. The first is that he now has a final retail version of the Xbox Series X. This is complete with packaging. He's bought it home, he's opened it up, he will have the same experience that people will have at home. He even put the batteries in. It's basically the mass production console. There's no debugging stuff, the employee, you know, it's basically the full experience. To my understanding, the mass production of the Xbox Series X was about a month behind the PlayStation but it doesn't really matter. I will be discussing some mass production stuff pretty soon. I'm trying to get one or two things clarified by a source uh, before I add to that. But from what I understand anyway, both uh, companies now have well and truly hit the mass production phase of their consoles. But I do have a tiny bit of information that I'd like to share. I do want a little bit of clarification for both though uh, regarding the schedules for how they were producing units. Moving on... The Xbox Series X design, Spencer said that on CPU and GPU side, the consoles are basically powerful computers. They wanted large fans that would spin a little slower so that they're not making noise. He wanted a quiet console, and they loved what they did with the Xbox One X. I have to say that the Xbox One X console, in terms of the cooling solution, was perfect. So then they said that they built um, a form, fact, form function which would allow a lot of air to be drawn in with a big fan spinning slower so they didn't get the high-pitched whining noise, as that can be, well, really unpleasant. They also said that what he loves about the Xbox Series X is when he plays Series X in place of the X1, there's no more noise to it. It's essentially the same thing, but a lot more powerful. You just plug it in, and it's a huge upgrade. All my games are working, and the noise levels are the same as the X1. Honestly, this just makes sense. I think that uh, having a quieter console is incredibly important. And yes, the Xbox Series X, with some custom hardware, of course, is basically just a high-end gaming PC. It's roughly on par with an RTX 2080. Although I say that with gritted teeth, because you can't really compare a PC and a desktop GPU. Because you start to run into questions like, well, what workload is happening what are you doing? Is it compute-focused? And so on and so on. But just roughly speaking. Um, they also mentioned, uh, sorry, Phil Spencer mentioned, that the PS5 is running higher clocks, so they have a, their boxes running differently, but it does create similar design challenges, which is true of both consoles. They took a different approach, but I'm pretty sure they had similar design goals for themselves, and how it runs and how it sounds, end quote. Spencer also goes on to say that he liked the design of what they've done, 
Uh, he has a lot of respect for the, what the teams of PlayStation have done, but they're just running their box differently, and therefore they have different unique design challenges on how to keep things cool. It's not a problem for both of us, so he confirms that both systems are, of course, cool, which is unsurprising. And they just took a different approach than what they did, what Microsoft did. I have, by the way... Um, Previously gone into a couple of different uh, things. The first is a patent for a PlayStation 5 cooling solution. There is apparently another slightly updated version of that patent, which I'll probably look over. A couple of you have sent that over to me, so I appreciate that. And there's also another video where I go into how Sony, as well as Microsoft for the most part, would do testing of the bring-up of a console. So I'll try to remember to link those in the video description. If not, you can simply search on the channel PS5 Cooling or something along those lines. With all of that said, though, thank you very much for watching the video. The normal stuff, like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.